welcome to Lavo's Mix Kitchen, a solution to access your ACR from just about anywhere. So now let's talk about Mix Kitchen and the various options we have at Lavo to support remote mixing uh, from software-based interfaces up to the fully blown remote control via an MC Square surface. Let me introduce Frank and Lucas. The scenario we have here is there is the headquarter in Rastatt. We have a data center here. That's where the processing core is sitting. And connected to this, we have a 48 fader MC Square 56 Mark III surface in our demo room. That's where I'm located right now. And then we have two outside locations. One is Lucas' home in Karlsruhe in Germany. And we have Frank's home, which is in Antwerp, Belgium. Let's start with Frank. <clears throat> Frank, in this COVID-19 times, you have been lucky enough to be uh, equipped with a 32 fader 56 Mark III surface uh, in your home. You have been doing online presentations and demos with clients. Uh, so obviously you have a local processing core. But recently you got upgraded with the latest gate server technology. And uh, what does that mean? What, what can you do with the gate server other than you could do before? Maybe you can, you can tell us a bit about this. Thank you, Christian. Yes. Uh, hi, welcome from my home in Antwerp. Um, yes, yeah, so my uh, 32 Fader 56 is currently uh, equipped with uh, gate server, and the gate server allows us to connect the control service to any core using layer 3. And in this case, I've got um, a VPN into the uh, network in Rastat, and I've connected my control service directly to the same core that Christian is connected to. So I can mix on that core from my home if I wanted to. Okay, so can you show us the console? That would mean that everything you do in Antwerp is visible here and vice versa, right? Did I get that right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, I'll switch to the camera and you can see that. So this is uh, my 32 fader uh, console. And if I go and move some faders up and down, you will see in the console next to Christian, uh, I'm moving faders up and down. So that is cool and scary at the same time. <laughs> so that means you could, you could be some kind of um, supervisor functionality that kind of remote controls into the, into the mixing console. But I could also work on the same production with you, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So we share everything. So my keyboard is essentially connected to your computer, same as your keyboard. So we um, operate the same production file and I can either be uh, the mixer at home mixing on that console and doing the, my mix totally safe from any uh, viruses, but I could also uh, help you uh, and assist you uh, in your mix when you're mixing on site and uh, you might not uh, have either the time or the, the skills to do it all yourself. Cool. So, and, and what about these 16 faders here to my right? I think my mine console is bigger than yours. So when I do something here, you don't see this, which basically means I could mix on, on, a separate, on a separate section of the console and you would be isolated from that because you only have access to 32 faders, right? Which yeah. would give some yeah. more options in terms of two-man operation, correct? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so you, uh, uh, you've got faders that I don't have, so I can't... Uh, directly access them. I could still call up the, the the channel onto my display and and do something to it if you ask me to, but I don't have this direct uh, fader control uh, because I only have the central and the uh, fader section right next to it. So any additional panels I don't see right here. So I did see you move something, and no, n there were no faders moving on my console. So Frank, and, and what do you do about monitoring? I mean, certainly you need to survey and monitor what you're really mixing from a distance. Yeah, I, I, obviously we need uh, full monitoring. I always jokingly say to my wife, so now if I turn on the television, I can mix directly uh, to whatever is on air, but there's all sorts of problems with it. And we also want to have PFL. So um, you can use uh, essentially any codec to get the audio back and forth. So whether you want, uh, uh, obviously it needs to be real time and it needs to be high quality. So things like Lucy Live or Unity Connect are obviously all uh, available. But if you have already uh, some codec going back and forth, you can obviously use that. So that means that the, the actual transmission audio and, and, and raw signals don't need to travel across and you're just tunneling, monitoring, and, and, and real-time control information, correct? 
That's absolutely correct. So if I lose my internet, I might get a heart attack, but the on-air audio is not affected. I just won't be able to control it anymore from my home. That's really cool, Frank. Can you can you switch a bank, Frank? Uh, yes. Don't, make, don't don't mess up my setup, but switch a bank. It's so exciting. I can uh, I can switch a bank without messing up the console. So I go to the bank switching, and I will then switch between the different banks, and the console at your end <laughs> will mimic that. So cool. Thank you, Frank. Effectively, this was really the large-scale version of remote mixing, so using a fully blown MC Square surface um, for highest demands. Now let's take a look at the other end of the scale um, and let's bring Lucas into the game. Lucas, I can see you have the mix kitchen set up in your living room. Would you mind showing us a little bit how this setup looks like? Hi, Christian. Certainly, thank you. So, welcome to my home. And I've got the mix kitchen built up here. And Mix Kitchen was a project that we were pursuing over the last couple of weeks in times of social distancing. So we really wanted to help our customers to still work with their environment, but back from home. So let me show it to you in more detail. Okay, so basically the Mix Kitchen setup consists of, uh, in my case, three major parts. So I have one big touchscreen right in front of me that represents the main channel display of the console. So everyone who was sitting in front of an MC squared console will uh, right away recognize that one. Um, so it's the central UI that I can use for all the operation of the console. So in my case, I have the metering view up and I can yeah, use, use it for bus assignment um, just as you're familiar with. Second to that, I have another MX GUI instance running on this tablet PC. And on this tablet PC, I have uh, a lot of buttons positioned on the monitoring panel uh, that I can use to make the operation of this overall system more easy. So first of all, I have uh, my banking buttons positioned here. So Christian, if I, if I change the, the bank on, on my, uh, on my uh, surface here, can you confirm that the banks are switching on your console in Rastatt as well? Obviously, yes. And as you can see, the third part of my overall system, so this uh, fader panel did also react on what I'm doing. So, and the third part, last not least, is for me maybe the most important one. Because while we have a beautiful virtual uh, environment, having some real physical hardware was very important to us. That's why we just took a regular um, Mackie Hui fader panel that you could buy at B&H, Toman or whatever guitar shop you prefer and just hook up to the system. So the fader panel is talking via RTP MIDI straight away with the console core back in the data center in Rastatt. And what we did is we mapped all the uh, buttons, faders and the vports of this panel back to the console. So by default, um, the panel is looking onto the ma main faders 1 to 8. So if I adjust those two faders, the main faders at Christian's place 2 and 3 should move. They do, yeah, they do. Okay, beautiful. But yeah, now you might say, okay, 8 faders might be a little bit limited. Um, so that's where really this small touchscreen comes into game because we're not only using it for remote controlling the main display for us, so by sh bringing up several different GUI pages, but we also have some special uh, buttons positioned here that we call remote HUI assign buttons, and that basically define on which area of the console this uh, eight fader panel is currently looking at. So by pressing one to eight, I just tell the panel, okay, please look on my strips one to eight. By pressing nine to 16, I just move them over to the faders nine to 16. Doing that, I actually have a pretty neat and fast possibility to control all the faders that are positioned over my MC squared console surface, no matter how big this console surface is. 
Wow, that's, that's cool. Uh, so it looks like you really have all faders and all banks and all layers perfectly under control. But is it limited to fader control or do you have also accessibility of other parameters? That's a good point, Christian. So we have all the buttons on this hardware fader panel as well. And what we did is that we mapped these buttons to actual functionality of the console surface. So the select buttons really control our channel and access. So if we look on our main screen, where we have the access channel on the upper left corner, um, if I select another channel, I can see that the access channel is, is changing. That really helps a lot if I'm in the in the main display mode, um, where I really want to have my uh, the overview of the channel that I'm currently controlling. So we have select, we have taken the mute button. The solo button of this, of this panel is mapped to PFL, so that I have the possibility to pre-listen um, to, to the channel and yeah, have more control of what I'm doing. The arm record button is actually mapped as well. And what we did is we mapped this one to the fader user button number one. So MC squared users are really familiar with why fader user buttons are really helpful. So you can put things like snap isolate on them, uh, activate or deactivate single single processing processing blocks. So for example, in our case, we have the compressor mapped here. And last not least, um, we have the VPOT. So the VPOT on this panel is at the moment mapped to the panning. So if I change to the panning view of this channel that I can currently see, so I can see, okay, that really controls my x-axis. However, the VPOT would not be limited to be mapped to the panning. We could also have other things there like delay or gain. So to make it easier for me to identify what faders I currently uh, have mapped on here on this panel, I have this permanent metering overview in my, in my channel display. And the left eight meters that are shown here are always equivalent to what I'm having on the, on the panel itself. But this is really only more or less uh, about the control side of things. But the audio control room environment is considerable more than that. So you can see the nice grass green speakers next to my channel display. And they are connected the same way to the backend in Rastatt, like we're doing it with Frank's location. So we're using an audio codec that is transmitting the control room monitoring over the van link. To control the control room monitoring, I have the, um, the monitoring section on my surface here, uh, not, the same way as I have it on the regular MC squared console. So I, I can just select what I want to listen to. And this will feed the codec that goes over the link. Beside that, I also have access to the computers that are located in my data center. So for example, I have my multi-track PC. This multi-track PC is really located in, in Rastatt and Using MX GUI, I can really easily bring the picture, the KVM, uh, over here to my place. So that's using the regular integrated remote desktop um, that you're familiar with with MC squared consoles. And the same thing works also for other PCs. In the same manner, I have access to my plugins. So I have a Waves sound, uh, Wave SoundGrid Super Rec kit in, in the demo room in Rastatt, and I can access it right from here and also control everything that I'm doing. Okay, so we covered audio and control, but what about all the other gear that we normally control from our audio control room back in the facility? Based on MX GUI, we really have an easy but fast solution for that. So switching the control room panel on the right side of MX GUI, we can see that MX GUI transports a VSM panel implemented back to our host. And based on that, we have all the functionality on our fingertips that we are normally used to in the, in the, in the facility. So it's not about controlling camera mic gains, for example, but in the end, we can control hundreds of third-party devices, including video routers. Talking about video, MX GUI brings another big advantage to us. So we have a kind of built-in multi-viewer. Based on our VLINE devices, we can show the video live view thumbnails that you know from the console surfaces already. And based on the VSM panel, I can actually really control what I want to see here.
Another small thing we did is we put up a small SCI camera on top of the console in Rashtad. So this brings a couple, uh, couple of possibilities so I can really see if everything works well down in the, in the facility when moving my, my faders here at my place. But, but that's not the only thing. We can also see Christian waving into the camera. <laughs> wow, what a setup. So really feels to me like you have everything you need. So does it mean you would be able to run a, a proper TV show from your home now? Or did I get that wrong? Well, Christian, I would really say so. So any scripted show, so shows we are familiar with, we've done maybe dozens of times, I would really be happy to control right from here. And that brings a lot of advantages. So it's not only good for the environment, but might also be beneficial for my personal work-life balance. And my family is happy if I can stay at home more often. Thank you, Lucas. A really exciting setup. So we have seen now a couple of different solutions from a pure touchscreen solution for remote mixing up to the fully fledged MC Square 56 surface that can remote control our mixing core um, back here in the, in the data center um, with, with the approach that Frank showed us. Uh, it looks like we have a couple of different options here. Thank you for watching. The Mix Kitchen was taken from Lavo Lounge, Lavo's weekly live program bringing you product tips, application insights, new product introductions, customer interviews, interactive Q&As, and more. Don't miss out this unique opportunity to stay connected. We're looking forward to seeing you at next week's Lavo Lounge.